I used to really suck at coding interviews, and over the years, I've literally 4X'd my salary, and I'll have proof in this video that what I'm saying is accurate and true, and even Business Insider reached out to me to confirm this. So yeah, I have all the receipts and the proof that this actually works. If you're a person looking for interview prep for Google or Netflix or one of these massive companies out there, then just click off this video. It's not gonna help you at all. If you're one of the other 99% of developers out there who are studying for interviews, feeling like you're failing, and maybe you're a full stack or front end developer, you need a completely different plan. And I'm a person that really, really sucked at interviews for a long time. I went to a coding boot camp. I didn't learn to code until I was around 30. Since then, I've worked at multiple companies around the Bay Area, went from a lowly developer up to an engineering manager, now a senior engineer at a large tech company, and I've worked at a ton of places in between. I know what it's like to suck, and I know what it's like to not suck. So I wanna give you some practical advice and examples of what I've done you can start doing right now to increase your chances of passing your next tech interview. Along the way, I'll mention some resources that you can check out in the show notes, grab them, they're yours for completely free. So five years ago, I was doing an interview for a senior developer role. I had a literal panic attack. My heart was pounding, I couldn't get my words out. I thought I was having a heart issue. And it's even scarier because I actually have a history of having heart issues. I asked the interviewer to restart the call. This is one of many embarrassing moments I've had over the years. One time at Google, the guy basically laughed me out of the room. He said, this is why we don't hire self-taught developers. And then there was the time at Meta when I was on the phone screen trying to solve a recursion problem. I couldn't figure it out. I knew I couldn't figure it out. So I literally asked to end the call right there on the spot. He's like, are you sure? In this guy's defense, he was super cool, not like the guy at Google who was a total jerk, but this guy was like, are you sure? Do you want me to help you out? I said, nah, I think I'm just wasting your time. I'm just gonna hit the old dusty trail, right? And that was embarrassing. I mean, these are all complete failures on my part. And I knew something. I'm like, I either will get better at interviewing or I'm gonna be at the mercy of the market for the rest of my career. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area and I just wanted a better process for learning how to attack interviews. At the same time though, most of my interviews weren't Google or Netflix or Meta or Amazon. They were like no-name startups that paid pretty well that I actually was interested in going to. I needed a completely different strategy. And here are the things that I changed and started doing that changed everything for me. Number one, I built a library of personal stories. There's nothing worse than when you're on one of those recruiter calls or that phone screen or the behavioral interview, especially if you're a manager, and they'll ask you one of these questions. Tell me about a time you solved a hard technical problem. Tell me about that conflict with a teammate. What's a project you're proud of? When did you fail? Instead of freestyling this, because almost all of our interviews are remote now, I just literally wrote this stuff in a Word document. I thought through what are the different stories that kind of show evidence of leadership or grit, determination, technical ability, technical depth, and then I just put them all in a document that I can easily look up. I catalog these, and even now, the more things I do, the more I add to my little story bank, and I can map these experiences to questions. That way I'm not thinking, wait, how did I actually solve that latency issue in 2020 at that random startup where I used to work? That's six years ago almost now. There's no way I'm just gonna remember that off the dome, right? I need this stuff written down and I need to paint a good story. Remember, this is a story you're telling. It doesn't mean to lie, it just means that you'll have to think deeper than, oh yeah, I think I changed that one configuration in this code base that I'm not really familiar with anymore. It, it's just, you can get into a not so fun state if you have a half-baked story, right? So just have this stuff down because you know they're gonna ask you these questions. So I know most of these stories now cold and I have what happened, what I learned, and what they revealed about me. This is how you kind of sell yourself because what good is passing the coding round in an interview just to bomb the behavioral section? And people write this off, and I used to too, until I did bomb a behavioral interview and they told me, you passed the coding and the technical and the system design, but you didn't pass the behavioral interview. I didn't have enough good stories that showed that I was capable of being a manager on that team. And I have a little exercise for you below that's gonna help you tell a technical story for your next interview that I think you're gonna find pretty useful. Next up, let's just be honest here. You can't suck at coding, right? You can't just be a personality hire, even though I do think that it's okay to be a personality hire. More on that in another episode. But you need to get clear on your technical gaps. So I needed to understand where do I suck 
and where do I need to really focus my attention? I don't want to be a master of everything, right? I just want to focus on the things that trip me up. So for me at this time, it was closures, prototypal inheritance, recursion, and coding challenges, things like frequency counters, building small components in React, things like pagination or React performance optimization things. These are areas where I was failing a lot and I didn't have a lot of knowledge that I had acquired naturally. So I had to go get this knowledge. So I was building out small projects in vanilla JavaScript at the time, now with TypeScript. I made videos explaining these concepts out loud. I later learned this is actually a scientific technique called the Feynman technique, where you learn by teaching. This was super duper valuable because when I got on camera to try to explain something like closure, I quickly understood that I didn't really know what the hell I was talking about. And then I would write code that was an example of the concept to make it really concrete in my brain. I wrote this stuff up and I talked about it on camera, kind of like I'm doing now, until I didn't need to really look at my cheat sheet anymore. Eventually I compiled all this stuff into a repo and I'm gonna share it with you for free. I used to sell this stuff, but I'm just gonna give it away for free and hopefully you'll find it useful too, especially if you're a JavaScript developer. And I can almost guarantee you this is gonna kick your ass if you just got out of a coding bootcamp. Now this next part was the hardest part. You have to be calm. Nerves will eat you up more than almost anything else in a coding interview. There are studies that have proved this out, but just intuitively, you know that during an interview, it's a weird scenario. You have somebody literally judging you for lots and lots of money. So I did something kind of weird. I had this odd thought in my head. I'm like, how do people that skydive just like do that every day? I'm like, that must be pretty boring if you skydived every day. And I thought, why is it boring if you skydive every day, but not if you do it like once every 30 years or something like that, right? The first time you do, it, it's going to be incredibly nerve wracking and scary. But after you do it 100 times, it's just kind of boring, right? It's like you're nine to five. I'm like, well, maybe I could treat interviews like that. So how can I do a bunch of interviews and just kind of get over my nerves? Well, luckily there's a site called pramp.com. I know there's also interviewing.io, not sponsored by either one of these people, by the way. I really like both these services. I use pramp.com quite a lot and I interviewed with strangers. I bombed questions, I embarrassed myself, but I got used to it and then I realized it's not the end of the world. I'm like, yeah, dead silence is kind of awkward. Not knowing how to solve a problem is kind of awkward. Sometimes you get mean people. Sometimes you get really nice people. It just taught me that, okay, like my nerves aren't firing off at 100% when I'm on a camera explaining some code. This was actually the biggest unlock ever. After a while, it started to just kind of feel routine. It was terrifying the first few times, but after like 10 or 12 times, it's just like, okay, I'm doing this again. I wanted them to be boring and eventually they were. Now I should mention, I also went to a program, Interview Kickstart, I learned on the side. Now Interview Kickstart was really good for FANG prep. I bombed all my FANG interviews, but, but it gave me the confidence and the technical ability to then interview at other places. Now startups in the Bay Area didn't ask anything like what we had learned in Interview Kickstart, which was exclusively DSA and system design. There are more than enough videos on how to learn DSA, data structures and algorithms that I don't think it's worth going through here. I think the project that I have in the show notes that's gonna teach you all the other stuff, like sliding window, frequency counters, building games with vanilla JavaScript, prototypal inheritance, closures, small design patterns, rebuilding functions that are used in libraries like Lodash, that's gonna be what's likely gonna come up in your interview. And of course, the number one question for any full stack or React developer is gonna be, build me a small React component that fetches data and displays it on the screen, and maybe you'll update it in some way. This is the stuff you should be doing. The result of doing all this work was my salary grew from 60K around 2013 or 14 when I started, all the way up to 250 around was my base at the peak of my salary during this time. That was from a series of aggressive job hops, also negotiating, which is a whole other story, but I'll give you my most simple negotiating tactic ever. I've shared this with other students at Parsity, and honestly, this is all I do when I negotiate. Literally, this is all I do. I say, this is a great offer. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to start. I was hoping to come in at this range, 10 to 20% more arbitrary number. I don't talk too much. I don't give a bunch of examples. I don't say I did some research. I don't do any of that. I don't really care to. I've been a manager and the unfortunate reality is you're always given a budget of how much you can give somebody or at least at many companies. And what you will do is you'll come in at some number that they tell you to come into or you'll make up the number and you'll expect that the person might ask for more. You want to leave that wiggle room. Now, if the person doesn't ask for more, well, now the company has saved money and now you're not really obligated to tell the person, hey, there was more money, you just didn't ask for it. 
that's how stupid this game is. But it is a game. And if you want to play it, that's how I decide to play it. It's worked out for me. I've strongly encouraged people within Parsity and the programs and the mentees that I work with to do it. Most of them don't. The ones that do almost always get that salary bump, and it's pretty nuts that that's all it really takes. Now, like it or not, and this is unfair, I know, but learning to interview well is the single most high leverage skill that you can have as a software developer. Is it fair? No. Is it reality? 110%. So get better at interviewing, but don't just do it by studying random lead code problems. Do things like prompts, studying with a human. Make an index of what you actually know versus what you need to know. Use tools like Glassdoor to look at what questions have been asked and what questions you might be asked in your own interview. And at the very least, ask the recruiter who you're working with, hey, what is the nature of this interview? That's not a weird question to ask at all. It's weirder to not ask that question and go in there completely blindfolded. Do all these things, study, work with other people, look at what you're going to be asked, don't study too early on, and lastly, don't extrapolate from failures, right? You're gonna get questions that nobody could ever prepare for or study for. If you bomb these kinds of questions, it's okay. Go back after a couple of days, review them, see is this representative of some kind of thing that I need to know, or is this a complete anomaly, right? Or is this something I need to study at all? Don't extrapolate. Too many people get caught up in these one or two failures and they think, now I'm gonna study this at the expense of everything else. So I really hope that was helpful. If you use those materials that I have in the show notes, I really think it's gonna help you out to identify not only some areas where you can improve, but also give you some practical challenges that are gonna elevate you and really, really help you nail that next interview. Super hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, reach out because I can go much deeper into this. I've written tons of articles, but if there's anything specific you wanna know about, let me know and I'll see you around.